Welcome to Everyone's a Millionaire podcast, where we explore the world of wealth and finance and provide insights and inspiration to help you achieve your financial goals. Do you ever dream of becoming a millionaire but don't know where to start? Or perhaps you're already on your way to accumulating significant wealth but want to learn more about the strategies and habits of other successful millionaires. In this podcast, we'll bring you interviews with successful entrepreneurs, investors, and financial experts, as well as research-based insights and practical tips to help you build and grow your wealth. We'll cover topics such as how to invest in stocks, real estate, and other assets, how to manage debt and save for retirement, and how to build a mindset for financial success. Whether you're just starting out on your financial journey or you're a seasoned investor already looking for new insights and ideas, Everyone's a Millionaire is the podcast for you. So sit back, relax, and join us as we explore the fascinating world of wealth and finance. All right, guys, welcome back to another episode of Everyone's a Millionaire, where every episode has a guest that is a millionaire. This is awesome. I have an awesome guest here today, Mr. Jeff Neidegger. And Jeff is a friend of mine. He is a beast in business. He's absolutely qualified to come on here today and to tell us um, how he was able to achieve his wealth and his net worth. Um, and I'm just really excited to have him here. I've known Jeff for, man, what do you think, Jeff, four or five years at this point? Yeah, oh, seems like so. Yeah. It's about, flown about, by. Five, yeah. about five years, man, it has flown by. So, Jeff, this is, um, it's all about you, brother, not about me. Who are you? Give us a quick little bio. And again, the episode links, I don't know if I told you this, 15, 20 minute stops. We got to keep them consumable. So welcome cool. to the show. Yeah, thanks, thank thanks for being here, buddy. Yes. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad to be here. Thanks for the opportunity. Yep, I'm Jeff Neidiger. Um, I, 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 there are more than one Jeff Neidigers out there, I come to find <laughs> out, but not very many Neidigers. So, um, yeah, so I, I've got a small business here outside of uh, the Chicago area. We call it Chicago Land. Um, I've got a business partner, Kevin. Um, as I was mentioning to you, you know Kevin, and we've, we've been doing this real estate thing for about 17 years. It'll be 17 years next month. Um, been married 20 years, got four kids, um, nine to 14 and, uh, previous life army combat veteran, uh, spent about 30 months, uh, down range, uh, 2003, four and five, uh, came back, started this thing, really no money. Uh, didn't know what I was really doing. Just knew I wanted to get into real estate for those three things that we mentioned, the, uh, chasing that, um, financial freedom, that, uh, relationship freedom and that time freedom. And, uh, yeah, we're a direct to seller home buying business. And, um, uh, we've been doing that for, for, like I said, 17 years now. So we're continuing to learn, continue to grow. We've got a great team and, uh, it's, it's not even about me anymore. It's about them and they, you are they make amazing. it all, they make you it look so, great. They make me look great. You are so humble too, man. I love it. I'm so happy that you are here today and then I get to connect with you and interview you for this app, for the show. So again, I just, I want to say thank you so much for being here, man. So let's rock with yeah. We got five but, questions. They're simple. They're fun. Um, it was, didn't no. require a lot of thought. So you're going to nail them. All right. Number one, what was or is your biggest financial mistake or setback? And then how did you recover from it? Biggest financial mistake or setback? Um, I don't know that it was in a, it was a setback. Uh, I'm thinking about the 17 years I mentioned uh, that we've been doing this. I think it was more lost opportunity or missed opportunity. It wasn't that we lost a bunch of money. I should say our second house, first house we made 10,000. This is 2007. If anybody knows about the market, 2007. Mm -hmm. uh, 2008 was our second house. We lost $55,000. But you didn't uh, stop. At that point, you've got a T intersection there, right? You go back and pay the people you owe money to, and that was family, mm -hmm. uh, and, and go back to work. That wasn't an option for Jeff. Um, or you figure out a way to pay it back and for, you know, you know, you, you reinvent yourself and, and, uh, so of course we did that. We, we went back to the drawing board. So this, we can't do this again. Uh, and then got smarter, continued to work hard. Uh, I can't dismiss the effort we put in. Um, so I don't think it was really just one thing that was, uh, that $55,000 for many, many people to include myself would have taken 
uh, could have taken me out of the game. And, and we just decided we're going to do it better. And I'm glad we did. That was probably a thousand deals ago. Man, everybody I've asked that question to doesn't look at that setback or mistake, regardless of what it is, as a bad thing. It's a lesson. And that's, yeah. that's what I heard from you, man. It's like, yeah, that probably sucked at the time. But I love Kevin, my business partner. Uh, I he's an educated better. guy, a lot smarter than I am. And he said, I can't, I can't afford this. I have to go back to, to work, you know, W2. And he, that's where he found his security. And there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, that's, sure. that we need to go to work. Um, he's going to work. And I said, dude, you went to college. I didn't. I spent my time in the military. I just paid for my education. So right. I can't do that anymore. So I, I really did look at it that night. I said, you know what? We, we can't do this again. Now, being in real estate, we're subject to the market, right? There's times that I've lost money. Uh, and that's not my one single loss. Sure, uh, sure. I just wasn't willing to look at that. I wasn't willing to look at that and say, we're out. So yes, you're right. We learned from that. And I can tell you, we came back a lot stronger and a lot harder. And, um, but uh, you don't forget those things either. No, not at all. They're, they're just seminars. Losses are seminars. You know, you, you take from it what you can. You move on, and ideally, you don't make those mistakes again. I love it. I All right, number two, yeah. moving on. Can you share, and I know you can, some specific strategies or tactics uh, that you have used to not only increase your income, but also your net worth? Sure. Um, of course, I've got, I've got our core business, right? So Kindle Partners, home buying business, uh, is, is the majority. That's the golden goose, so to speak. Uh, so that has to work in order for everything else to work. Uh, I'm not the entrepreneur that has 40 or 50 businesses or three or four businesses. I have done other things. We've done some private lending. So as you, you know, you have some capital and people say, I'm starting a business. I'd love to be that partner if I could. Now, I don't have to be an expert in their business. I just need to know that I can underwrite a deal and, and figure out a schedule for me to get my money back, right? With some interest. Um, that is one thing. And then I've taken a good portion of what I've I've earned over the years. Uh, I feel like stewardship of, of the resources that, uh, that, in my opinion, God's given us, we've got to uh, manage those properly. So we don't just bury those in the ground and walk away and hopefully that we return for more. Um, we've taken that and put it in whole life insurance, and that's been a catalyst uh, for the way I've been able to, to continue to um, save our wealth. I should say it's not an investment tool, in my opinion, but it can become that should you use it for that. So I borrow against that money and become my own bank. And I know that's very cliche, but I've actually done that and I'm a practitioner of that. And so um, that is one other way that you can use your money and leverage it. So I love leverage. I love to get in the middle of things uh, and, and and be able to provide leverage and some smart leverage and um, make money on money. And so I do all that. I do that while I continue to run our core operation and, and let the team really do what they do. And, and that continues to provide all the opportunities. But honestly, I'm always buying and selling things. I mean, I've bought and sold RVs. I bought an RV for 30,000, 30,000 bucks on a Friday, sold it on Sunday evening uh, to a person for 47,000. Um, you know, so there's all those things and, you know, $20,000 can move the needle pretty quick for your average person. So uh, just looking for opportunities. My eyes are always open um, and try not to get shiny syndrome, uh, shiny object syndrome, you know, because I can do that too. Yes, sir. Spoken like a true millionaire, man. That is awesome. Just finding ways and uh, different approaches to leverage not only your time, your money, your investments. I love it, man. Um, you did that. That was awesome. Very, very cool. All right, moving on. Number three. In relationships, right? And in I relationships. Go back in the relationship. I, I think yes. the leveraging the relationships, you know, who you know, and, and just listening for those opportunities because people say, oh, there's no opportunities. I'm like, you're just not listening. You, you're just not you looking. don't have to have a million dollars to invest. Yeah. Yeah. So look, turn your thousand into two thousand, turn your hundred thousand into two hundred thousand. So Right. Amazing. All right, cool. Number three, moving on. Did you have any mentors or role models who influenced your approach to wealth building? Now here, check this out. I'm not asking who these people are. That's not the question, right? I wanted to know how your role models influenced you. Uh, yes, of course. Uh, I did. Um, several along the way, although I will say early in our journey, let's say call that the first five years or eight years, the first half of our 17 years. Um, not many people intentionally, I don't think you, you learn from these examples, good and bad, and then you catalog these in your mind and write them down and you take the, you, you like, you, you eat the whole steak, but just, you don't eat the bone or right? you spit out that part. So you take what's applicable 
and you uh, go apply that in your own. Uh, and then I think as you mature in business, um, and you don't need to get to a certain level to do this, but I think that you go out and find a coach or a mentor. We met through a, a mastermind, a small men's group mastermind. I don't even like the word mastermind, but that's really what it was. But it was a community of like-minded people that were there for a, a, a common reason. We all wanted to come out better, better men, better investors, better humans, et cetera, et cetera, husbands. Um, and I think as what I, what I would have done earlier in my career would have been to find people earlier, you know, that, that could help us move the needle quicker. And I don't just mean financially. I just mean, show me the way that you did business because I, I, I like, I like you. It's a, your culture fit and let me learn from your mistakes. And you're that person for a lot of people. I've been that person for people. Um, and it all along the way, uh, I think you need different people at different times in your journey. You know, I, I might not, I, I probably, I probably wouldn't have been ready for David Dodge personally when I was 23, <laughs> personally, you know, three or four years later, I know a few things or the next mentor or the next coach, but I can't, I can't, um, uh, I can't even put a number on what that has done to, um, through EOS, uh, through different coaches and implementers. Um, I won't go back to that. No matter what I do, Kevin and I and my business partner, we will have a coach or a mentor in that, um, probably a specialist in that, in that area that can help us navigate that next phase of business. Man, what an awesome answer. And one of the things that I have been hearing over and over from the previous four or five guests, you know, on the show here is so much value from these individuals. They wish they would have started sooner. And then again, one thing that keeps coming back to me on the answers here is, is that we are learning from the mistakes of our mentors, right? Why is that important? So we don't go make those mistakes. And I'm not saying that we're not taking a lot away, right? But some of the best lessons are the mistakes they've made so we can prevent making those mistakes. So what a great answer, Jeff. And people and people are willing and coaches and mentors and friends. You don't all these people that I mentioned don't need to be aren't always requiring payment. Yeah, the man that's still there is going to be a client customer relationship, right? No, no, sometimes it's like, David, would you mind spending an hour with me? You know me from so and so, and like, yeah, of course. And then you have that conversation, and that moves. That that's a whole paradigm it's shift. Needle. No, that one small thing you said, I'm like, oh my gosh, are you serious? And then, you know, I think you just have to be open to to that. Uh, you can certainly use YouTube to fix everything, uh, but it's really hard when you have very specific questions and you need to ask uh, to find that one on one kind of peer. Um, so yeah, I, I can't say enough about finding that right person. There's so many good ones out there. There's probably several poor ones too. Um, you just gotta know what you're looking for and, 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 uh, find the right one. And then you got to leave with your feet, right? Yeah, you get absolutely. all this information, take 20 pages of notes. Now you got to, yes. And there. then you got to go act on street. One of the, another, another one of the themes that I'm, you know, as, as the host of the show here, I'm, that I'm learning is, is that almost every person has said, I wish I would have found a mentor or a coach sooner. You yes. know, so it's just like if you are new and you are listening, guys, don't try to reinvent the wheel. Just find somebody who knows how to use a wheel and have them teach you. It's going to be so much quicker and so much faster. So, all right, moving on. Number four here. We're almost done here. How do you balance risk and reward when making investment decisions? It's a great question. That is the question. That is the business question, I believe. Um, how do you balance it? Um, or what are you thinking about when you're making an investment decision, right? Are you looking at profits or are you looking at, you know, how do I mitigate my losses and my risks here? Like yep. at this point in my career, Jeff, I don't look at a deal like how much money I can make. I look at it like, can I screw up three times and break even? Cause if I don't screw up, I'm going to make yep. money on this deal. So that's my answer, right? What's yours? Yes. Uh, it's a great answer. We talked about this before we, uh, went live, um, I, I do try and filter and, and I'm speaking with, for Kevin as well, my business partner, uh, that when we make business decisions through our, 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 our core business Kindle partners, um, we are, we are filtering in or running it through the filter of how it affects our relationships. Uh, not every minute by minute decision, but I'm talking about big decisions that are going to move that needle. Um, and if it's a one time thing, that's, 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 that's the exception, but um, so I think it's how it's it, how it's going to, now, honestly, I'm at the point where I'm, I'm going to, how is it going to impact my time? How is it going to impact my wife, my kids? Is it going to take time away from them? And some of that is yes. 
and you just count the costs, right? You just count those costs up. You just got to, you kind of make your list and the balance is like, right. Walking a tightrope. Sometimes it's over here. And then sometimes it's over here. I don't, I don't know that you ever find this perfect harmony. You might find it for a day or a week or a month, but I don't know if you get to 10 years, it's just one thing requires more of you. So now it becomes the time thing for me. Uh, the investment is how much, how much time less about, um, the, the risk of failure. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm confident in a lot of things that I just look, yeah, of course we're measuring the reward. Everybody looks to the bottom line, says, what can I make? And I'm like, what's it going to cost? Man, the, the financial, what the financial selfless, number is just one, one component. What a selfless answer. Because really what I heard there, lots of things, of course, but the main thing that stuck out to me was, is what's the opportunity cost of this decision? You know, and that's, that is, that is so beautiful, man. I, I love, 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 love that answer. Amazing. All right, moving on. Thank you very much, by the way. Yeah. All right, number five. This is my favorite question, and it's so simple. You know, it doesn't require a whole lot of thought, but it's truly my favorite question. So here it is. Looking back, what advice would you give your younger self to get to where you are just quicker? I think it was question two or three, uh, two maybe about the, the mentor. I think that's really what it was. I think in business, particularly I, I we're applying this to, to, to business. Uh, but I would say you can apply this to whatever you're doing in life. I think that oftentimes we don't want to ask for help. I'm, I'm speaking for myself and maybe many of your, uh, listeners and viewers, uh, you know, if you're that person, just say, I, um, it's like, you don't ask for help. You, you do it on your own. I think you need to find that person. Um, if you're building a house, I don't know, I'd recommend do it on your own. If, unless you're a builder, go find the person that's the expert and hire them in this case, an architect, a contractor, whatever. And if you're in a real estate business, wholesale business or other, go find someone self like you like, like David Dodge, uh, like, uh, there's, there's a lot of experts in the field. Go find the ones that have done that and are willing to teach. You've got to be willing to learn if it costs you a few bucks, I go ahead and pay it. I was kind of unwilling. Uh, oftentimes to, to pay. And I was not taking my advice. I just gave a minute ago about what the, the opportunity cost was, uh, the, the time. If I told you I could take you from one to eight, uh, in your business in three years, and it's going to cost you 200 grand, you probably, you'd probably be like, ah, I don't think I can do that. Uh, but you know, if I said it was going to cost you, um, you know, $200,000 every step, um, you know, if you didn't, you know, it's like, if that's didn't. probably the real cost. Yeah. I think you've got to write it all down and figure it out. So I think the advice to me is find somebody in what, find somebody in your field or your sector or has been there um, and is invested in you. Um, if you got to pay them, then pay them. If you got to go work for free, go work for free. If you got to go intern, go intern. Um, give some time away and uh, be willing to be willing to learn. And um, there's nothing new under the sun. I mean, we've got a lot of trailblazers in our industry and in business, but you know, they're, it's all essentially recycled information. They're just maybe doing it better. Um, and so go find the person that's doing it how you want it to be done and, uh, go learn from them. Amazing, man. I'm learning from you right now. This is awesome. Jeff, thank you for being here. Thank you for your time. One last question. Oh super gosh, simple, fun. super easy. What would be some just parting words for the listeners here, right? Cause the majority of the listeners are going to be you know, non-millionaires, right? They're going to have a net worth less than one um, million, which it, the, the 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 actual statistics are. It's right now it's one in seventeen people, you know, are the millionaires. So this this show is really put together to be hosted by the millionaires, which is the five percent, for the other ninety five percent. So just last question, real quick, you know, what advice would you give anybody who's just trying to create more income or generate a net worth above and beyond? $1 million. I think you've got to have a plan. Uh, I don't think it has to be a perfect plan. I think people oftentimes want to work on a perfect plan or come up with a perfect plan. I just don't think it's out there. As soon as you make it perfect, uh, the, the, the horizon changes, uh, or the government changes something for us, something out of our control will move and it'll, your, your plan will crumble. So I don't know, make your plan 80%. And then um, go execute. But I think you've got to start with, and I hate sound cliche, and there's books out there on this, and I do love Simon Sinek, but start with why. Great book. I think it's a great resource. It's a simple read. 
you could read the back cover and get most of it, but there's a lot of good uh, meat in there that I think there you is. could go chew on and figure out what you want because your why, David, and my why are similar, but they're not the same, but that's yeah. okay. They shouldn't necessarily be. Go find what's important to you and your family for wherever you're at, whether you're 22 or 82, uh, and figure out where you want to be. And sometimes that's a 10-year plan or a 50-year plan or sometimes that's a two-year plan. I want to do this for two years. I want to get here. And if it's a financial plan, I believe you better be have it written down. Um, I think you better know where you're going and uh, have a really good idea before you start walking out in the wilderness. Uh, and I just ended up you know, sure sports where... yesterday, one of our, oh, yeah. our friends, Mr. Collin, and oh, yeah. he said something super similar that he said, you know, A, you want to have a plan, of course, but B, you know, not all of the stoplights are going to be green. And this isn't his exact words. This is just how I interpret it at the same time, right? So sometimes, you know, if you're 60, 70% certain, you got to just jump, got to take the risk, right? And yes. Uh, but if you don't ever jump, you're never going to get through any of these stoplights in this metaphorical, hypothetical scenario here, right? Uh, but yes, 1000% agree. I, I think that's it. Have a plan, Have, have figure out what you're good at that. In my case, I'm good at some things, not good at others. My business partner, who I referenced several times, is that other side of things. Uh, uh, we're we're 100% clear in our business uh, relationship that I'm the innovator, I'm the visionary, and he's the integrator. And another friend of ours, Chris Arnold, once explained Kevin and I, as he was explaining it to to others, I heard him say, "Yeah, Kevin is just uh, you know tethered to Jeff Bullen." You know, you're the guy with the million ideas that wants to float off in the atmosphere. And Kevin's like, hold up. We got yeah. one here. We got a good one here. Let's focus I'll on all these guys. Yeah. And, and Kevin's a great what I needed. And so I know that about myself. Uh, and Kevin knows that about himself. And so we really compliment each other. And that we talked about this before uh, we did the recording here. But, you know, if you if you believe in business partnerships, I think you should heavily investigate someone that could work well with you. Balance, it's nice to go to a whiteboard and bounce this off that person and say, what do you think? And then figure out who you are uh, and, who, and who you're not and try, stop trying to be everything to all people. Uh, it's impossible. And uh, One of the best parts about having a business partner is they keep you from doing dumb stuff. Oh, it's so much more fun, <laughs> dude. It's so much more fun. It's so much new. We've got a great culture and a great, a great, great, you got some fun and sarcasm and you get somebody to pick on and be picked on. And, right. And to, to tell you you're being a bonehead, you know, that's good too because you might think you're all that in a bag of, Bag of Bring you down to earth all the time. That's right. Well, Jeff, Gotta have thank it. you I for think. your time. Thank you for coming on the show. Thank you for all of the amazing advice, strategies, tactics, um, and just all of the, the wealth and knowledge that you possess. You know, it, I feel like it's part of my mission on earth to, to help share a lot of these principles and strategies with people because wealth isn't hard to accumulate. Success isn't hard to achieve, you just need to be consistent, you need to be focused, and you need to have a plan. And these are all things that you have said here today, so I wanna thank you. And guys, with that, signing off. And that's a wrap for today's episode of Everyone's a Millionaire. We hope you've enjoyed our discussion and that you've gained some valuable insights and ideas to help you build and grow your own wealth. We wanna thank our guests for sharing their knowledge and expertise with us today. And we also want to thank you, our listeners, for tuning in and joining us on this journey of financial discovery. If you've enjoyed today's episode, be sure to subscribe to our podcast, leave us a rating and a review on your favorite podcast platform. And if you have any questions or feedback, please feel free to reach out to us on our website or on social media. Remember, at Everyone's a Millionaire, we believe that wealth is within reach for everyone. And we're here to help you achieve your financial goals. So until next time, keep hustling, keep learning, and keep building your wealth. Signing off.